Welcome back to the European LCS where it is coming down to game five between the first seed SK Gaming and the fifth place Unicorns of Love from the regular split. Unicorns performing fantastically. One more win will lock in a spot in the spring split finals against Fnatic. Yeah. And the winner of that will represent Europe as a region at the mid-season Invitational. I mean... Five, we're three for three in game five semifinals. It doesn't get better than that. The question is, to lease in or not to lease in right here for the Unicorns? Hey, you well. said no. You said no. So the reason I say no to this one, and I honestly expect him to ban it, my concern is just the way you're losing is by you also taking these fights against, against SK Gaming, and Lee Sin, Rek'Sai, and so on will have close to the same early game impact in that way if you take the fights. The question you can then ask is, can, can Svenskrim do the same plays on, let's say, a rec side compared to the Lee Sin, where he's so mobile and he's like jumping around, kicking people back all the time? No, he won't be able to do that, and that's why you could ban it away. I just worry that Svenskrim might just do exactly the same on yeah. another early game champion, and then you just sit back and say, oh, okay, it wasn't just so Lee Sin, it was the player. If you do ban that and you assume Nidalee, Rex side, do you assume Kikis is going to go to the alternative? Kikis picked that Udia quite early on in that previous pick. If he band. wants to play like he did in the last game, he has to pick an early game jungler. Okay. If he wants to contest the fights against Svenskan, he has to change up his picks that way. And I think if they want to remove any bans, it's the Lulu you got to take away. It's not because SK plays Juggermore. We've never seen them run it. It's because it's been the main pick for, for and rated. If you remove that one, you can ban the Lee Sin in that situation. Let's see what they decide to do. It's going to be the last one. Same 280 carries, I agree. And that one from them, there's the Lee Sin from the Unicorns as well. Right, we're going to have to catch up very, very quickly. Very fast lock-in for the Shivana. Lee Sin, as you touched on, is gone. Lulu available for Inrated. It is a Caitlyn wow, okay. Annie duo lane. For the first time this series, Vardags is not running yeah. Jinx. And as you highlighted, Deficio, the Annie engage in the mid game has been something that Unicorns have not been able to deal with. Definitely not. And I like the takeaway because now you suddenly have such a fantastic 2v2 lane where Forgiven won't be able to get the same CS lead as beforehand. And also, in raid, it's been great outside of the laning phase in catching out the Unicorns of Love. Let's see if it's going to be a Rek'Sai for Sven in this game here. He ranked Gragas in game three, I believe it was despite Lee Sin being open and didn't really have too much of an impact on that game. Will they aim again for the early game pressure? Now we're gonna have to see, can Sven make the same plays on the Rek'Sai and will Unicorns of Love take the same fights in the early game? Well, Sven Skeren is definitely gonna try. He's got his hands on Rek'Sai. Kikis, number of options available for Given going to Corky, a champion that really fell out of favor um, in recent weeks, recent patches. Doesn't have that same mid-game power spike that was so effective a couple months ago. Well, he, he, so he has the same spike, it's just... Less effective. Less of, it's, so, it's such a small window for Corky to be effective. If you don't use your mid-game properly, you fall off so hard compared to some of the other AD carries, and you have no way of dealing with a tank in the late game as a Corky, and that's obviously one of the big problems for him. The window is still there, in the mid game, where you will be extremely strong, which is what SK Gaming is looking for. But this laning phase, which is with just talking to Caitlyn, is not going to be easy. Did not expect that, Tefisio. With the Corky, you do expect the lane swap, especially considering the 2v2. However, with Chachi locking in the Gnar, that's going to be an interesting matchup up in that top lane. He does, of course, have the ability to harass and bully in mini Gnar form. But Gnar, also a champion that has fallen out of flavor in recent weeks. The Lulu was expected for in rating. It's been bad. Yeah. Four of the five games, it is his best champion. And Fox going to Zed, which is arguably one of, if not his best champion. 5-0 and oh until... Actually, he's 6-0 and because oh, he did win the game he played earlier today. Still undefeated in 2015. And the Corky pick obviously opened up for Zed here. You got some magic damage on Shivana. You got the Corky as well with a lot of his mixed damage. It's going to be a jungle. Okay. I <laughs> Looking at this, I mean, jungle Maokai used to be a thing. With the Cinderhawk as well, your late game is great, but your early game is horrendous. And obviously, you can't do anything against the Rek'Sai in the one-on-one. -on -one. 2v2 lane, as we said before for SK, or 2v2 around the mid lane is in their favor. 
Unicorns of Love cannot take any fights around that mid lane like they have done before, and they've been punished for it. Hold your thoughts. Every single time. Okay, we swap it around. I've heard not of, much changes. Heard some things about the jungle now. It's again because of the Cinder Hulk. So late game, you become extremely tanky on him, but it doesn't change the fact that you cannot fight around that mid lane at all. That's in control of SK Gaming. So what they can do now, SK, is they can lane swap. Fast push down with the Lulu, which is a strategy they like to use, and one of the reasons people ban Lulu against them, because in Rated and Forgiven always try and fast push in the lane swap. Take that tower. You have your Shivana who can jungle. You have your Shivana who can sit and farm with E in a 1v2 situation, and with the Smite as well to pick up some farm. And then you simply swap it back once you got the BF Sword. Oh, not the BF Sword, sorry. The Phage, Sheen, or whatever it is Forgiven wants to have and you go back to lanes after you're taking that tower. For the last time today, guys, there are your team compositions. For Europe, the next team to join the finals, who will it be? Hashtag SK Gaming or hashtag UOL. Let us know. Wow, it's been a long day. Hashtag SK win or hashtag UOL win. That's what I should have said. At LOL Esports, you guys know how it works. The winner will be facing off against Fnatic. The loser will be facing off against H2K. Championship points are on the line, as well as that spot at the Mid-Season Invitational. And Kikis is debuting his Jungle Gnar in the deciding battle against SK. Another team comp that cannot afford to make mistakes early or mid. UOL have to fix yeah. the problems they had earlier. And I want to see if SK is confident enough taking the 2v2 lane. I mean, Lulu is one of the best supports in the early levels. It's like 1 to 3 in terms of the damage she does provide. And you also get that Shivana into Maokai lane top, which they obviously want for Freddy here. It looks like they are swapping on the top side. That's what we talked about in champ select, what you can do. So now you have double smite to double jungle. Either you start on, on your own camp, or you just run together and you try and clear as fast as possible. And once you go down in the 1v2 lane, you have your range from the E of Shivana, and you got the smite as well to pick up at least some of the important CS, the cannon minions, and so on for Freddy. So we will get the lane swap. I think this is the smartest and safest idea for SK. No reason to try and take the 2v2 into a Caitlyn Annie. Well, we'll find out how it works out and who's going to be able to get that early pressure onto the towers. Forgiven and Enrated gonna have a lot of pushing power. Probably just a little more than Hillesang Vardex. However, if the jungles come to help out, quite like Mininar's ranged auto attacks to keep tower pressure. So, Forgiven and Enrated, they're on the Gromp. They will be heading top lane. There's a Chachi, He's chilling by the Wolf Camp. We'll see when he decides to head to lane. And it looks like Freddy is holding Svenskeren's hand for the time being. Yeah. And this also makes it a little bit harder for Svenskan to have a lot of early ganking power because often in these lane swaps he has a jungle. Like either you go to one lane to deny farm and push in a tower, or you go down to help your own top lane and farm on the other side. Obviously not the best in that case with Rek'Sai. So only really one lane Svenskan would be able to gank. That's going to be the mid lane. Therefore Unicorns of Love should be able to expect this one and play around him. So they do try and nullify his early game a little bit. We're obviously going to swap back to standard lanes once these towers have gone down in the in the side lanes. We're going to have to see then. They're going to go for an early dive on Freddy with the TP from Missy Chachi as well. This is a lot of commitment here. Ignite burned. They're chasing very, very far. Unable to get the kill. She was just the Ignite, so no flashes burned for that one. But that was a TP from Missy Chachi, so he's yep. not going to get any farm up in the top lane. You know SK Gaming will always push the lane. So the other play Unicorns could have made was they would have done a lot faster jungle route with Kikis on the bottom side of the map, and he would have gone down here once Freddy showed up, and they would 3v1 just push him away. And then Mr. Chachi could have tried to pick up some farm on the top lane for himself, at least get some XP, but instead they use him as the guy going for that early gank. Freddy has been denied all the farm. Unicorns now just need all these minions to die perfectly, and then you want to see if you can get the minions grouped and just hit your first minion so it slowly starts pushing towards you and you deny more farm from Freddy. SK, of course, going to mirror and do exactly the same. Well, I guess there is a little bit of a solace in the fact that Freddy being forced out of lane means that he is almost equally denied as Visit Chachi. 
Towers are applied back and forth as Kikis gets control of the bottom crab. We do see Svenskeren, or rather SK, were able to secure the top crab. And we'll keep uh, a close eye on this jungle knot. I do like the fact that he's got a fair amount of AoE when he gets into Mega Knot, and of course, the percentage damage in his W in Mini Knot. So, clear speed keeping up with Rek'Sai thus far. Yeah, he won't be able to keep doing that. Um, seeing also due to the fact he's relying on the Mega Knot. Going to have the same kind of Rek'Sai, he's still one of the fastest junglers. So, Svenskan in that case, if they just have a farm fest, should get the best of it. But then you obviously have to talk about the scaling. Now he's going to build Cinderhold, can become a big tank in the late game where Rek'Sai is going to fall off, both in terms of a damage and a tankiness, because she's building the warrior enchant. Normally here in Europe, at least, we have seen Cinderhold in some of the other regions from her. Knowing Svenskan, he will aim for the warrior one. And once we swap back to the standard lanes, he's going to start looking for the gains. He's once again near the mid lane. Wave is pushing, so Power Weaver might have to overextend if you want to push it all the way into the tower. And that opens up for Svenskan to force a clash at least. Look at Hillisang, he was hanging out by Raptor Viggs, but has decided to back away. And we do see Power of Evil's also backed away from that mid lane, so not going to overextend further than he needs to. Clock's doing a good job in the lane, still holding onto a potion. And Svenskan, with the numbers advantage down bottom, is going to call in some support. And this will be a very, very early dragon. If there is any team that is capable of going for a five-dragon victory with a team comp that will be more powerful at an earlier time, it's going to so be SK. I'm very surprised Unicorns decided to put Vardax in the top lane to pick up the big wave that was pushing down. SK Gaming didn't try and freeze the wave up top, didn't try and bounce it on the tower, they just pushed it all the way down. So Visichachi could have walked into that lane sat with the freeze that Vardex is hitting with now and picked up all the farm. By him being bottom lane, you give up all your lane pressure completely. He's not going to be able to hold off this tower if Forgiven and Enrage just keep pushing it down. He doesn't have the wave play to do it. You wanted your Caitlyn and Annie to be in the 2v2 lane from the get-go. And once you had the chance to swap down and go for it, you didn't. There was a small XP lead for Forgiven because there were only two guys pushing the tower top with three from the Unicorn's bottom lane. But you basically put your Caitlyn to build up a big wave, not use her strong early game, not deny any damage uh, that SK can do on this tower. And obviously Freddy's just going to return up and pick up the wave because it's a one-on-one -on -one lane anyway. He's not really afraid of Caitlyn here. He's going to get all the farm, and SK is also going to get the damage on top tower or on the bottom tower. One of the big things you kept talking about at the Intel Extreme Masters championships in Katowice was the fact that Freddy was denied multiple waves by intelligent lane swaps and it was a very big determining factor in controlling Freddy's impact in the mid game. This is not what the U Unicorns have done and we'll see if it comes back to hurt them. It is still even footing with Freddy. <clears throat> Teleport will be available with Vizichachi in a moment or two, even on CS, even on levels. The one thing I want to highlight is the fact that Vardex, Hillisang and that early tower play from Unicorns Oh, that's going to follow. Oh. Good try, Observers. Um, I think the fact that Unicorns went for that very early tower play has actually put Vardex behind on CS. And I think Unicorns are going to give up first blood. Sven Skeren has done it again. Tower shots are out. The exhaust is ticking away. Kikis is trying to get one in reply. He will manage to kill Secure, but now Fox is trying to get one up. Oh, the nice stun one. from Hillisung should be enough to save Kikis. It looks like it is. Ignite will tick away. It Such takes an two important play. for one as Hillisung is able to roam. And we saw the same place here from Svenska on early game. Rek'Sai this time around got the first blood for them, but then Hillisang with the roam, as you just talked about here. And with the play Unicorns made beforehand, the only thing they really lost was some damage on the bot lane tower. By pushing Whee! it in, Chachi gonna follow Freddy, who already took a red buff. He pushed in the wave Mind. here. They're chasing a burnout, that's a flash. Arcane smash to slow, Kikis has just turned back into mini Nar. Boomerang does not connect. That slow may have been needed. We do see the root coming in. Kikis is trying to get some auto attacks down, looking to get hyper. This boomerang does connect. Chachi continues to chase. There's a red buff available. Arcane Smash will get it. One more hit. Kikis gets the kill. And I Chachi lied. gets it. Chachi gets the kill with a touchdown sapling. And all of a sudden, 
Unicorns of Love, 301. Deficio, we've seen this movie before twice. Yes. And both times, the end credits is SK Gaming celebrating a killed Nexus. Let's see whether or not the third episode in today's series will turn out differently. Helisang trying to defend that pink ward. We do see Vardags. Oh, he's almost going to get killed by the Gromp. It's a pretty scary toad. Vardax is in such a bad spot as a Caitlyn play. If you don't get to use your early power to get a CS lead and be a bit of a bully, then you enter this mid-game phase where you're one of the weakest AD carries and you need so much time before you're going to be useful. You need to hit three items before you start having a big impact on the game. Corky is obviously going to hit that fantastic mid-game instead. So by, first of all, Unicorns fast pushing the bottom lane tower, by the fact it was a lane swap, I guess we can say, first of all. And then sending Vardex to the top lane and like solo pushing a wave instead of getting the 2v2 on the bottom side. He's not been able to use his early game on Caden. This tower has been taking a lot of damage. Ever since Vesicacci was down here, he's now taken by SK Gaming. So this 2v2 lane, with the way Unicorns decided to play the swap, has gone in favor of SK. If you ever needed more proof, a Hillisang is a big reason as to why Vardax does well in lane. 10 minutes on the clock, 56 CS to 97. Let's also be fair, this Unicorns also dove. They did make, they did forego a lot of free farming. Yes, but this is also the strategy they pulled off. Yeah. Like, it's not Vardax saying, I'm gonna go top. I'm not gonna listen to anyone. Like, that was obviously Unicorns as a team saying, okay, you go top, you push out the wave. And Forgiven just picked up a lot of extra farm. Never really been under any pressure on the Corky here. 100 CS nearly at 10 minutes. Trinity Force coming in fairly soon for him. And then you have this insane spike where Unicorns is going to take so much longer with double tank you need to scale up with a Caitlyn. Oh, uh, I think Vizichachi's in trouble here. Despite the sapling, it's just going to be a simple cleanup. Kickers is too late to this party. Sven Skeren with one more Prey Seeker, picks it up. Kickers, is he going to pick this fight once he goes Mega Nar? That's the decision. He's about to transform. He's going to hop himself away. Not going to secure anything this time around. Fox with a well-timed roam, able to dissuade any sort of engage. And even Vardax being bullied by the Rockets. Oh, forgive it. Unicorns find themselves 2,000 gold down before the 15 minute mark. And look at the timing of this here for SK game. Bottom lane, no threat, there's no tower that can be pushed in. So they don't care about that way. That's a dead lane for them at the moment. And instead they put the bottom lane in the mid lane to push it up. So they have to the pressure there. They force power people to stay in the mid lane. And meanwhile, they just look for that gank top side where there was an overextended Maokai and even do it. Time correctly so Dragon spawns and they are in the right position to be on the bottom side now after the kill to be ready to fight for that Dragon. Unicorns of Love are playing League of Legends in hard mode. SK have got a team comp that fits their exact preferences. At the very beginning of the day, Freddy made a quote saying, anybody who says our team has one playstyle is just looking for things to moan about. Let's be fair, the games you've won is when you play SK's playstyle. When they've picked scaling comps into late game, Unicorns played them like a fiddle. But when SK grabbed the reins, Nobody can get it back. Uh, and SK and Svenskern is on the early junglers. I mean, the Danish player, Deficio. Danish player. <laughs> There's one guy in the audience. Woo! Hey, I like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dragon has been up for a little while. SK, I think, respecting the Nar Maokai combo, not picking a fight yet. Trying to get some poke down and look at Freddy's Look at the side top. lanes. SK doesn't have to do anything because they're going to get minions to push in on a tower in the bottom lane. If anyone shows from the unicorns, then SK can go down and start the dragon. Meanwhile, as, you, as we saw Freddy here, up in the top lane pushing in that way. So they're denying minions in two side lanes and they're just waiting for unicorns to move to one of the lanes and then you start dragon. That's all you have to do for SK here because they set up the side waves beforehand. Really good setup for them. They have everything under control at the moment. And that dragon? Just been, well, just wait. Just like clockwork, as Oriana shows in the bottom lane, SK Gaming secure their second dragon at 13 minutes, 25 seconds. SK has won multiple games this split by getting that fifth dragon and simply winning within two minutes of securing it, rushing down the base, winning a team fight, and saying GG no re. 
if they do that today, it will be GG No Re, as SK will qualify for another spring split final. Remember SK last year, in the finals against Fnatic, they won the regular splits as they did this year. But then they just faltered to Fnatic in the best of fives. SK may be looking for revenge once more. It's going to be quite a game, but it's not over yet for the Unicorns of Love in this situation here. We're still looking at SK Gaming. They're the ones who has to make the plays. They don't want to go full late game here by any means against the double tank, Oriana, Cake, and everything from the Unicorns of Love. But knowing SK Gaming, they don't really take any chances either, which has been the big difference between them and Gambit. If you look at the quarterfinal games for the Unicorns of Love, where they also picked slow scaling comps, fell behind early, but then Gambit made some mistakes and Unicorns came back and use that to go to late game. SK Gaming is a lot more calculated, it's a lot more about, you know, you push in the lanes 1-3-1, one, one, and you simply just take every single dragon and use that. Let's see what oh, happens here, though. Svenskeren's going low. He's maybe been caught a little bit out of position. Chachi's TP'd in, jumped onto Freddy, who didn't even need to use that teleport. Unicorns of Love are forced away. Kickers is about to go Mega Nar. He throws the chimney at SK, unable to find a target. Wallop will stun Fox, but not able to get anything more. And SK were able to secure the teleport from Unicorns. I did not track who actually picked up that blue buff. But Unicorns again feeling the pressure. Look at how real here. The entire time. Here comes the Void Rush. Svenskeren looking for more. Does manage to force the flash away. Actually tried to flash in rather. It was Fox looking for Power of Evil not managing to make it work. Sven was joining as well. They're simply just controlling the side lanes here. You got the TP advantage. We're aiming for a kill. And meanwhile, we're mid lane. You got this Corky on the Trinity Force. Nothing is going to stop him. Caitlyn didn't get to use her early game at all. <laughs> <laughs> Kiki's on the Gnar. Just Wait. being a little annoying. We really see the playstyle from Kiki's. During the split, there's a lot of Nidalees, a lot of early game junglers from him. And then ever since Cinderhall came out, this is all he plays, Cinderhall champions. Despite not looking at what SK Gaming has been doing in the jungle, kept going for the tanks. This is obviously a new one, the Nar. But it's not one that's going to change anything in terms yep. of what you can do early on. Not feeling the Shaco today. However, Unicorns of Love need to prove that this jungle Gnar, as many of the teams like to call it, can work out. Yet to be impactful, but I think important to note, staying relevant on farm. Um, very similar itemization. Svenskeren with that kill. A couple extra towers is slightly ahead. But got the Cinder Hulk. Got that challenging smite. Got some HP to play with and all of the innate tankiness that Mega Nar gives you. Yeah. I think if Kickers can, you know, time a good Gnar into the wall, there is potential, but it's just so difficult. Like, every single champion is mobile on the SK squad. I don't see how Kikis is going to knock multiple people into a stun. I just look at it and say, why not Sejuani? And you just throw the ulti instead. Somewhat of the same effect. I guess because he really wants Because this is Europe, to be sure. We don't play Sejuani yet. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty true. <laughs> yeah. look, at the, look at the play of games here. Nobody's really wanted to play Sejuani. I, I will dominate last night. Had Fantastic ultimates. Oh, Sejuani is so good. Yeah. One of the best junglers. Battle pig. Anyhow, SK Gaming has been split pushing quite a bit. Now they've decided let's try and make a play. We already pushed on every single lane. Power people just got to push down or push back the bottom lane. SK Gaming doesn't see the opportunity to get one kill so they can just go back. 1-3-1. One, one. You start putting focus on that dragon. Look for Freddy to just push out this top lane once more if it gets pushed back and then walk down, walk down to the dragon. And we'll find out if SK play it out exactly as predicted. Fisher, you seem to have had a great read on the teams all day today. I doubt it will change. The tower does survive a lot of damage. Very few auto attacks landed. And the Unicorns of Love doing the best they can to hold out. Take note of Power of Evil's build. It is different from the Orianas you've seen today. Rod of Ages into the arm guard. Nope. Don't like it apparently. We've seen that before. Tell me Frogan. why. Well, the thing is you're an AP carry and you're going to have zero damage with this build here. From him, you don't have any proper mana region either with it. With that. Going That's in done! Hillisun gets three! Oh, with a massive gnaw from Kickers. He knocks him into the wall. But all they get is enrated. What more can Unicorns do? They've got a kill. I lost it, but they did not get anything more. The reaction was phenomenal. 
You know, unfortunate for Unicorns, there's nothing else but defense. And I doubt they're going to get that opportunity again. That was Flash Tibbers, Flash ulti from Kikis as well. Dragon spawning 20 seconds and ready, will be ready for it. Like the play though from the Unicorns, you saw Zed in the mid lane, so you knew there was a chance at least to start a fight. You obviously would have wanted all three of them and not just the support. If anybody was sleeping, I definitely woke them up with that one. <laughs> My bad. Unicorns, they managed to defend their top inner turret, and very importantly, Bardags and Chachi will secure their second tower of the game as we get close to 20 minutes. Freddy is trying to run down Vardags. Visit Chachi's gonna root him in place. Vardags is gonna land auto attack after auto attack, but here comes Enrated. Dragon secured by Svenskeren, and Chachi's down. Now they're gonna run down Vardags. If the Glitter Lance connects, it's not even gonna be needed. They get the tower, they lose the dragon, and... Nice flash. They lose Vardags. So SK splash. Gaming, three in trouble. Yeah, lose Visit Chachi, sorry. Meanwhile, Forgiven sitting and defending the mid lane. Three dragons to zero. 20 minutes in. Not been the same amount of big fights early on. I mean, there's not a 7 0 Lee Sin. No. Nope. It's just been a lot slower game because SK is just looking to keep pushing in the lane and get your towers down instead of going for the kills. As we can see, Freddy getting some damage on the top tower. You're going to push up the bottom lane. Hey, look, Freddy's, Freddy's backing. He's not staying greedy to put damage down. This is also an upgrade from previous games in the series where he he has been greedy and been punished for it. Very true. SK as well, investing into deep wards to try and spot what's going on to save Freddy before anything goes wrong. And we're back in the split pushing style. Look at the CS difference to Fisher. 50 CS in the mid lane, approaching 60, 70 CS in the bottom lane. Only just finished that Infinity Edge for Vardags in comparison to the Cutlass and Triforce and Sork Shoes. Forgiven is on another level of damage at this stage in the game. Yeah, play of the Ring King on Corgi is a change we've seen from a lot of the players. Because you're against these big tanks here, you're gonna need that blade to take them down. Just to go back to Power of Evil's build, we didn't talk too much about it. I mean, the Rod of Ages, Rod of Ages into Hourglass, the problem with it is it takes such a long time for you to scale up now. Because you're going to need a death cap, you're going to need a void stuff before you start doing any serious damage at all. You don't run any mana region in this build either. So if long team fights, you're going to struggle as well. And we've seen Froggen build this, which really didn't work for him. Because it just allowed SK to ignore him in the early to mid game. Play around him instead. Well, one thing does need to be said of the Unicorns of Love. By 22 minutes in both of their losses this series, they had lost the game. They were so far behind. Yes, they are yeah, still down. However, it is not as far down. The, the bigger concern for me is not the towers or the gold. It's the dragon counter. It is. And it's why SK Gaming wants to get the early dragon so they know, okay, we might not be able to siege on your tower because we're running like a Z, so we can't really go five men just take your tower in. We slowly spray push, slowly chip them away, and then we keep having that dragon, which is going to be that ticking time bomb where we're going to force you to come and fight us at some point. Or I should give it over to us, then we take a Baron as well after that, and then we close out the game. So, Unicorns, while they are not as far behind, they're trying a flash play on Forgiven. Well, the has got Forgiven, but the Tibbers does not. Forgiven's able to get himself away. Now Fox is trying to flank. Here comes Power of Evil from behind. Unicorns are split. Tibbers has already been used. Chachi's teleported in. Here comes Svenskeren and Freddy. Fox is throwing down the death mark. Vardags is down. Without the damage, I doubt you all can win this fight. Shockwave was already used. They've traded one for one in the fight. And I think Unicorns of Love a little bit lucky to come away with that one. Chachi and Kick is trying to get back. They lost Fox. Forgiven still relatively healthy, got double buffs as well. The rest of Unicorns are actually going to try the siege up. Minions yeah. should be cleared very, very quickly. Hillisang gets the stun on Freddy. Minions are now cleared away. And SK Gaming thinking about a re-engage. Forgiven takes so much damage from the attack and the distance. Kickers is about to turn. He's got no flash available. Keep that in mind. And Sven Skeren still waiting in the wings. So at the end of the day, one for one, Unicorns continue to fall behind in gold, but uh, even trade in the team fight to Fisher. Best they could hope for, and also they got to stop all the lanes from being pushed, and now they can return to them and pick up all the farm. That's the big deal here for Unicorns of Love. Whenever they force a team fight, if they get SK Gaming to leave the side lanes and join the fight, 
and then go even. Unicorns can return to the silence and now pick up all the farm that's already been pushed down. That's going to be the big deal for them. Let's see the fight itself. It was first Hillasan going in, stunning for Given, then Tippers came in after and TP. So they're trying to force the fight here. SK decided to not take the side lanes, but instead aim to fight them because they have this Corky, which is so good in the mid-game compared to the Caitlyn. So they think they can get more from joining the fight than just taking the outer turrets. Start is good. Shockwave on the tanks from Power of Evil. Get the kill from Vardex and now just chasing on and getting caught a little bit under the tower, which was still alive for Unicorn. So SK calculating a little bit wrong here. Could have stayed and at least got on one of the outer turrets in the side lanes. Figured they could get more from the fight. Well, well played by Fox to find Vardex. Remove the AD carry from the fight. Reduced any further potential that could have come from that. And Unicorns, they hold on to fight another day. 45 seconds until Dragon. It will be Dragon number four. There is so little wiggle room for Unicorns of Love if they give that one up uncontested. But with no teleport on Vizichachi and no real vision control in this area of the map, you have to feel they're going to give this one up. It's so risky to be playing around here. Kikis has got a pretty good mega gnar timing, though. If he can find a few auto attacks. Let's see what Power Healer can do as well. Just, as we mentioned, no mana region for no cooldown reduction either when the Rod of Ages comes in first. So he has to lay his core items quite a lot by getting the outlast as well. Chachi forced to join in lane because of the lack of teleport. Means Freddy keeps pushing. Yeah, SK just needs to buy time. If Unicorns ever start the dragon, SK can decide to TP in and fight or just let Freddy keep pushing on the top wave. Unicorns here have to be very decisive. Well, there's the teleport. It's actually Vizichachi that jumps onto Svenske and the rest of Unicorns of Love looking for an engage. Kikis gets turned into a munchkin. He doesn't get to gnaw. He's about to pop into mini gnaw. Now Freddy still has the option of Dragon's Descent in. The Shockwave does get to in the backline as Vizichachi re-engages. Svenske and Narrated are forced away, but it's Kikis the first victim. Now Power of Evil is being focused down by the Dragon Lady. Vardex way out of position. He's not going to be able to get too many auto attacks down, but Fox jumps into range. Both AD carry securing an to kill this fight. Two for one. Dragon untouched and Power of Evil, his survivability and tank ability may be working out in this team fight. Yeah, two for one, but Unicorns of Love still fairly healthy if they want to try and take this dragon. Sven can recall and return with his ult. Is there any tunnels nearby? One has just been cleared now. The other one, I believe, is up here near Forgiven. He's going to come in. Let's see if he can stop it. He has to smite. Not in time. Very important, Dragon. Can Unicorns get out? Well, they may be able to. 90 caliber over the wall. Hillisang is sacrificed to Forgiven. But so important. Plus six minutes. Five time, yeah. Plus six Give minutes. Six more minutes for Unicorns to get to late game by getting that Dragon. And Deficio, we're 27 minutes in. SK have been on three towers to two for the last 12 minutes. It's been a long time since any towers have fallen. So and that gold lead, yes, it is still growing, sure. but map control, map tower is still standing. But you have seen how SK thinks they can take the fight, and that's why they want to keep going for it instead of just pushing. Here again, you could have let Freddy stay top and take tower if you wanted to, but no. SK game, they want to fight. They have the core key into Caitlyn. You got the Z as well before any QSS is being built. That's why they keep looking for them. It's a good ulti for Freddy. Gets denied pretty hard, though. Shocker from Power Weaver getting both in Reddit and Sven. And now we can just see Zed goes in, no QSS this early in the game to stop his damage. And while SK managed to get two kills, Unicorns were healthy enough to take the Dragon, which is the important one. And really SK, they showed they want to fight so badly. Every time they have a chance of taking a tower, they decide not to, to go fight. And it's not been paying off for them. Well, Deficio, we've got a much, much closer game in the deciding matchup in this best of five. Unicorn still falling behind, but not as drastically as their previous losses. Take a look at the itemization. Phantom Dancer finally completed for Vardax. Last Whisper, in fact, picked up for Forgiven. He really has to, or wants to, get through Vizichachi and Kikis. And we did see SK starting the Baron a moment or two ago. They've got a couple of pinks, some vision in the top half of the map. Kikis is just exploring with those boomerangs, seeing if he can find a target. Does find in rated. someone. Does get turned into a little munchkin. Now we do see Fox. We do see the wallop come down. It's dodged by the death mark. Kickers gets the stun into Fox, but there's no support. Teleport coming in from Chachi. Will he complete it? The answer is no. 
The kick is caught out in Rated plus Fox. Gets a kill onto the smite of Unicorns of Love. Now Chachi could jump into this area. Let's see what Freddy can do. Remember, there's no death mark available. If a good shockwave hits, I think that might be the only way. Freddy, Dragon's Descent into the river. Baron will be secured. No it's stolen! It is stolen! Power of Evil has kept Unicorns in the semi-finals! I can't believe that just happened. They're all gonna get a mid tower as well because everyone from SK Gaming is trying to recall on this side. There are no words. How? There were two smites available. Yes, Freddy was in the river being chased away. With that steal, Unicorns of Love may have bought the time they need to close the gold gap. Remember, they are still down in this game. They are behind in dragons, yeah. behind in kills, behind in gold. It was the Baron Steel needed to keep their hopes alive. All right, so let's take a look. The Shockwave will do about 500 damage, while Smite will do 720 from Svenskern. He tries to ease Smite. Shockwave gets pulled, and there was no Smite from Sven at all. Onto the Baron. Very clear, he wanted the E from himself and then the smite after. To get as much damage as possible. That is so, so massive for Unicorns a lot. Tafisio, we break 30 minutes on they the got clock. Point and as a well massive, now, Evil. massive minion wave in the top lane is going to allow Unicorns to secure the tower lead for the first time this game. If ever. SK were to feel pressure, it is right here, right now. Being in control for so long. And it wasn't even a 50-50 Baron, there was no smite. Yeah, we've given Sven so much praise for his games where SK Gaming won. Now, big mistake from him right here. Dragon. 1 minute and 20, that's going to be the next one for SK Gaming because you're starting to hit the point now where Unicorns of Love are strong enough to just sit and wave clear and, in and these side lanes. And then even if you get a fight and SK is not ready, they can get instantly one shot now. I, I want to touch on the itemization. Last Whisper now for Vardax. Randuins plus another Giant Spelt. Frozen Heart for Visit Chachi. The tankiness is building. You already highlighted the Void Staff. It's a non-traditional Orianna build, but in the last Dragon fight, Power of Evil sustained a fair amount of damage. That's the thing again. The only bad thing about it in, the, in this sense is that it delays your core build, your, your damage, but now with him getting the Void Staff, with him, with him steam, still being in the game, he can get a Death Cap as well. And then he's gonna have the same amount of damage. He's still gonna lack some, you know, some mana region. He I guess he has extra mana from the Rod of Ages, but then he has no cooldown reduction either, which is one of the big deals for him. So he needs to make every single spell count. Mostly gonna impact due to the shockwave. Cool point, but still, Unicorns of Love has done everything they can to stay in the game. And SK Gaming's, not, I'm not gonna call it greed, but they're, the way they decide to say we, we wanna fight because we can get more kills by fighting than we can get oh, more gold from fighting and winning the fights than we can from taking these towers when Unicorns try to engage. And then trading one for one, one for two every single time is why it hasn't paid off for them. Well, keep note, Dragon is alive. Kikis's Mega Gnar transformation bar is slowly powering up that boomerang. Every time it connects, one more hit. Oh, Kikis is taking a lot of poke though. He's about to transform. Dragon's been pulled. Vardax is starting this one in the back line. This would be number two if it's secured. Sven Scary comes in. Vardax it's an auto it. attack from Vardax. Kikis is looking for the fight and Freddy is chasing down. That's a big gnaw. It manages to stun Forgiven on the back line. Freddy and Fox are on the front line. They found for Vardax. I think he's going down. He is down. They've managed to trade him for a mid lane though. And Freddy's running him up. The shockwave catches Forgiven. But can Chachi keep him alive? Power of Evil continues to chase. There's no more mani for mana for Corky as Kikis is dropped off screen. Hillisang is not in this fight. Now there's no cooldown reduction, which is, Deficio, which is what Deficio is talking about. Flash away from Vizichachi. It traded two for one, but it's going to be much, much worse. Dragon secured by Unicorns of Love. Vizichachi's down. Power of Evil will be down. 
The Hillisang is in full retreat. They feel it's a matter of time, although the stun might be able to save you. Senskeren, that was a little unexpected. We don't see the Glitzerlands connecting. Senskeren manages to get the knock up in Hillisang. Hillisang tries to turn around and enrate it. And manages to catch another trap. <laughs> there we go. Four for one, plus Dragon not over yet. That will be a delayed ace. Right, Dragon went to yeah. Unicorns. Forgiven is going to be pushing down multiple towers. So some very, very key things. There's no QSS for Vardex yet, so the Zed can still jump him. Kick is... He's in trouble now, I think. Yeah. Committing for this kill. All of the support from SK. That's transformed into Nar, but he's not going to have the ultimate cooldown available. This means Vardex and Chachi are left alone to defend. Gold lead increases to 7,000 Dragon timer. Again, plus six minutes. And here's a look at the fights. Let's take a look. So Vardex, no defensive items yet. We know as a gamer wants to jump him, and the rest, like the front line from Unicorns of Love, trying to keep the back line busy. But the big deal here is the caveman is going to go down very early in the fight. There's nothing for it to do here because you, you don't have that QSS. So Vardex dies, and that's a lot of the damage from Unicorns. They're running a double damage threat. Only Orianna is left here for them. Meanwhile, Sven still has fairly good damage at this point of the game. And they can simply just out-sustain Unicorns of Love at this point. And in the end, clean up all, all the kills. Wow, we jump back to live. 35 minutes. The gold lead has grown. Top in a turret fell, bottom in a turret fell. And SK... There's the QSS. There it is. Regained control. Just saw Vardex recall. Figured he had enough for it. That's going to be so important for next fight. If Unicorns of Love manages to simply kite back when SK tries to engage in, then you can kite the Rexa, you can kite the Shivana, and you can make sure your two carries, one as an Hourglass, one as a QSS, doesn't die to the Z, and then suddenly you can win the fight. You saw how Forgiven trying his best, but he has to keep hitting these tanks. You invest all your mana as Corky. We have hit the point where you can't really take them down too fast yourself. So as long as Unicorns kite back and protect the two carries in the back, now they have the defensive items needed. Then they should be able to win the fights. It's still not 100% in their favor, but it's going to help a whole lot compared to the last one. We'll find out on the next installment of Big Team Fight Game 5 semi-final. Svenskir and clearing out the vision around Baron. The last time SK started that, Power of Evil stole Baron buff with a shockwave. Unicorns of Love. I feel like they're posturing very aggressively. They, they seem to be trying to keep Unicorns down. And what I like is the adaptation from SK. Void Rush is available for Sven Skeren, so he is the one pushing top. There's a tunnel network both above and below the middle lane, but Vizichachi is engaging. They're actually going to engage onto Freddy. Freddy's been able to get away. Void Rush comes in, it's Freddy that starts. Now we'll see how late can Sven Skeren join the fight. Vardex gets caught by the QSS. We just see Fox gets burned by the exhaust, and the QSS was popped. Vizichachi, the front line is down. Shockwave catches three, but it's simply not going to be enough. Vardex again is very, very low. Unicorns of Love have lost one. The ace in the hole does absolutely nothing as it catches behind the Dragon Lady. Unicorns of Love initiating a fight under Freddy. You've got to question that decision. Power of Evil gets knocked up into the air. Come on, Protect will keep him alive. Kickers is on the bottom lane. SK is trying to peel away. Vardex, you're a little bit alone. This is quite scary. Prey Seeker catches. No one else from SK can jump onto him. Fox kills Kickers off screen. Once again, there is no smite. This time, there is no shockwave. Baron, number two, game number five. This looks safer. Can somebody else from the Unicorns do something magical? Baron, below half, they it's being melted. It's They're not in, in. range. 3,000, big auto attack onto Forgiven. It crits, hit a sign, flash stuns. Here comes Shachi, he's caught Forgiven. Vardax is unable to get all the attacks. They've got them, Fred Skerin's down. Forgiven is down. We see them, they continue chasing. Vardax is getting get caught out. Two for zero. There is no jungler. Top lane is low and there is no teleport. Unicorns of Love are setting up for Baron. This game, man, is going completely insane. The Unicorns tried to engage on the big tank beforehand here. Ended up being caught out and now the Baron, because SK started it, even though Chachi had that teleport ready. 
Let's see if they can come back in time. Look at the side lane. No ulti for Freddy at the moment. Teleport's going to become up available so, so soon, Deficio. Deathmark is available. Freddy's there. Fox gets caught out. He's stunned. Shockwave goes down. He's going to throw out the death mark onto Hillisung. I don't think he'll be enough to kill him. Fox is now down. They're trying to focus on Freddy. He gets chain locked. Stunned into the wall. Freddy is down. Freddy is down. Two for zero. You Sven's going to go for the bottom lane. They're Sven. going to give the Baron and he will try and take at least a tower down here. There's so many minions for SK Gaming. We've seen split push Rek'Sai before, but this one will be successful. Unicorns of Love have gone to lose an inhibitor turret. They secure Baron. Now they turn on to Enrated. Enrated's trying to buy time for Sven Skeren. Sven is about to secure the tower. It's down. Now he turns his attention to the inhibitor, but Kikis has managed to find him. Vardex caught up by For Forgiven. Does he want to pick that fight? It does look like it because Vizachachi has jumped on him. It's looking Forgiven. That's it. Is there ace in the hole? No, there's not. Heal? Summon a heal. The root, the auto attack. Forgiven's down once again. In two, in two deaths in five minutes, Unicorns back in control. Actually, no, screw that. Unicorns are now in control. Now they are. Dragon is alive. They picked that one up. Sven against Hillisang here. Kick is flashing in. All right, all right, all right. That was great from the Unicorns of Love. Now just need to take this dragon, go back, spend some of your gold. There's a 3k gold on Vardax. There is three and a half on Power of Evil. You're in prime position. You're late game. You have everything you need to stop a Zed from killing you. Corky is gonna fall off. You're now gonna get a death cap on Orianna that was so needed because it's been so delayed with the build Power of Evil went for. It is here now. Deficio, I love 5.6. I love semi-final best of fives, and I can only think to myself, are you not entertained? What a fantastic series. Unicorns of Love were down for 30 minutes of this game. A miracle Baron Steel brings them back in. A ridiculous play onto the split push tank of Shivana results in Unicorns regaining control. You could not write it better than that. But it is not over yet, Trevor. SK Gaming here, if they manage to get in the back line, or if they manage to at least buy enough time to kill this Chachi or Kikis in that front line, they, they can still win the fight. It's just getting so hard for them. And if you look at the two compositions, then SK should never be able to win anything at this point in the game. With fully completed items, close to at least for Unicorns of Love. Just needing one more for Power of Evil. Tower number five falls. Look at the side lane. A massive minion wave is amassing in the top. Unicorns, can they buy enough time to make use of it? Bottom, I feel, is pushing against them. Unicorns are putting some damage onto the start. Shockwave gets forgiven! They don't manage to take him out, but he's not available for the fight. Unicorns, can they commit to the objective? That is the question. They start hammering it down. Keep your eyes on Vardax. Freddy is trying to pull distraction. The Wallop gets onto Fox. Fox is looking for Vardax with the QSS plus the exhaust. Vardax survives. The pop is not enough. Now they should be shining in from the back line. Forgiven's been able to heal. He's rejoined the team. Look at the minions in the top lane. Unicorns of Love continue to focus the objective. There are two mega Ultra Siege Cannon Minions on the turret. It's down. They're now on the inhibitor. They should be able to peel back as Baron times out. Top lane should be available. And the Unicorns are ahead in gold. The Unicorns have arrested control at 42 and a half minutes. They're not done yet, Deficio, as they're on no, the top they're lane. They're going to get more. 30 seconds here on the Z from SK Gaming. That man down. And Unicorns are not done. They're not done yet. They're re-engaging on to Freddy. Here comes Finn. He's knocked up Vizichachi and Kikis. Gets a two-man wallop. Enraged and Freddy looking for more. But there's no Dragon's Descent. Kikis in Meganar is going to start backing away. And Unicorns of Love take absolute control. This is for a spot in the Spring Split Finals. And SK Gaming, oh, they're making a they're big play. They're going to get in here, but Freddy's going for the inhibitor. The rest of SK, they're pushing. We may have a race on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Vizichachi forced to cancel the recall. The rest of Unicorns are now low. Freddy has got the inhibitor. Super minions will start spawning a rated. Caught out by the Tibbers. Wild Growth will keep him up for Someone a while has to go or two back here. Take a look at the Nexus turrets. Freddy is focusing it down. The audience is waiting with bated breath. Teleport is being used to try to keep it alive. Kickers should go down. 
down. No, he survived. That's a shield. But Vardax is caught out. Rek'Sai was able to take him out. Kickers is low. He'll transform. Take a look at that. Now Rek'Sai is going back. They're onto the Nexus turret. We've got a base fight race on our hands. Unicorns of Love might be out. There are at least a lot of them dead now. Two guys down here. Both Vardax and Kick is 50 seconds. SK Gaming, they're trying to see if they can finish. Chachi oh. clears all the minions. Where's the rest of SK? Look at the minimap. They were moving top. Exposed next side on both sides. Inhibitor down middle for SK. Inhibitor down bottom for Unicorns of Luck. Spence Garen and Freddy. Rather, Freddy and SK. Great decision to push the base of the Unicorns. All right. How on earth do you prepare for this scenario? We reset again. The whole thing. Baron and Dragon coming up. The Dragon doesn't matter at this point at all because there's no fifth Dragon to be taken for either of the teams. Baron is going to be a big one for the Unicorns, Unicorns if they want to use it as a tool to potentially force a fight or maybe SK Gaming can try and sneak it in. The thing is, Unicorns should still not be able to lose a fight. Five on five, <laughs> out in the open, they should not be able to lose at this point. But as we can see here, there's a lot more things going on. Suddenly you are, things have happened. you're TPing in the base and you're stopping the recalls and everything. And we're still also at the point where the death timers are so long that if you miss position, especially as a carry, you can lose the entire game for your team. Not, and no comp can save that. He's gone. No longer belongs to Unicorns. Keep in mind, with the previous play, it was SK that took back gold lead. It is a small solace, but it is an indicator who has slightly, slightly more combat power. The scaling is in favor with Unicorns. And the Super Minions are being dealt with. SK have pushed the waves out. 44 seconds for Baron, 40 seconds for Dragon. It is not Dragon number five. Baron has to be the more important target. 100% sure. SK trying to set up some vision control around it, but quickly getting denied, and they're not strong enough to just force the Unicorns out of there jungle here, so they should be able to get some defensive wards down. SK back to some sort of split pushing. They might want to try and force a 5 versus 4 team fight, where you then have one guy going for the Nexus on his own. There's no TP for the Unicorns of Love. To get back and defend in time. There's no Rek'Sai ulti either for them. Could be the option for SK. Tension is palpable. SK will secure an uncontested dragon. Vardax is left to defend the base. Fox pushing out the minion wave. The rest of Unicorns, very defensive positioning. Notice Kickers just went Mega Nar. If SK were to rush Baron, that could be impactful. And it looks like they are going Baron. Yeah. Vardax will take a long time to get there. This is this is scary. It's the best possible inhib possible inhib that Power down for them. Oh, they're gonna find him. Can they kill him? They've got Fox, but will they lose Baron? Fox QSSs. Hillisan continues to chase. Power of Evil's looking for the dissonant speed up. Fox has pulled three members. It's all on Vizachachi and Kickers. There are flashes available, but are they going to go in? I think they're giving this one up. SK Gaming have taken Baron. All right, so what Unicorns, lost did, Fox. what Unicorns did right here was try and buy time for that inhibitor to respawn. They didn't care about SK getting Baron. By getting that one kill, you stop SK from pushing. Because yes, Baron buff is fantastic, but this late in the game, you're not going to go in 4v5 anyway. So they sacrificed Baron to get a kill. So this inhibitor should respawn in time for when SK comes back and then they take the fight. If there is Possibly against a, a Baron buff team, but still with your comp here in the late game. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something a little abstract here, Deficio. If there was ever a team that won or was involved in backdoor nexuses, it would be Fnatic as number one. If there was ever a team that lost to backdoor nexuses more than anyone else, I'd argue SK might be up there on that list. Yeah, possibly at least. And all of a sudden, it's SK with Baron and one nexus turret between them and Unicorn's Nexus. One turret between SK and a spot in the Spring Split Finals. For Unicorns, five seconds left before Fox yeah. respawns. So they gotta go push out that bottom lane for them to make sure there's no way that Freddy can TP in the base and try and finish off the game if Unicorns move out of it. So now inhibitors respawn. They got what they wanted. They got the one kill. Waited it out. Didn't have to risk it because it's so tough when the bottom lane inhibitor is the one that's down and a Baron is up because you have 
travel so far to stop it. And there was no TP as well at that time, but we see Chachi. So they made the decision. Can they get that 5 on 5 team fight they want? Or will SK try and split push their way to the win? Let's watch Kikis' rage bar and Fox's positioning. QSS is up, Ignite is up. Everything is available for both Fox and Vardax. Vardax left. We do see the Righteous Glory coming in. Unicorn's looking for an engage. Hillisang is not deciding to flash. Fox should be able to get some damage. He's actually backed away. Guardian Angel was completed for Power of Evil. Keep that in mind if a fight breaks up. Boomerang will get the slow. Big chunk. Very good ulti from, from Vardax. Ace in the hole. It's really difficult ulti. We do see the flash engage from Hillisang, but it's only on defense scare, and I don't know if it's enough. Wild growth onto Freddy. He's not used Dragon's Descent yet, as Kickers is about to turn Mega Nar. Needs one or two more Look hits. The here. He's on the back line. He's going onto the inhibitor. It's the objectives that win the games. Mega Nar is available, and Fox is pulling all of Unicorn's attention. 3,000 gold difference. Vardax left to defend. The rest of Unicorns are the mid inhibitor turrets. As long as they keep SK here, it's fine for the Unicorns of Love. They're waiting for that one opening. Well, I'm not going to so find it out yet. of mana, so SK has to back away now. Oh, that's a flash boomerang from Kickers. He's trying to take advantage of the fact that Forgiven is not there and SK are split. Where is Chachi? Teleport is available. Void Rush is going top lane. SK are peeling away. Baron has worn off. Yeah, and this means now for Unicorns of Love, they can push out that bottom lane and they can go five together near the mid lane. And SK Gaming cannot go for the back door then. They have to sit and defend, and then we get the five on five. Is there a flash here from Chachi? There is a flash! Ace in the hole comes out. The root does get instantly QSS. The rest of Unicorns, they're chasing. Power of Evil is trying to cut him off, and I think he's going to make it. Take a look in the top lane. Always look at the minimap. Svenskeren is trying to push on the side. Unicorns of Love, they're continuing to chase. Rated has found Fox. He's no longer in kill threat. Somebody needs Risky to back place to, to deal with Rexai. here. He might get stopped and then Sven moves all the way in to the base. Everyone from Unicorns decides to recall here. Dragon is now a thing for SK Game with number five. And let's see what's going on. We're back in the base. It could, all, it could all come down to one more Dragon. Could do, uh, I mean, it's gonna be one more team fight. Or it's gonna be one guy split pushing for SK Gaming. You got Teleport, you got a Zed, you got a Rek'Sai. There are a lot of ways for you to decide the game on your own with that one Nexus turret, but it does require some minions to join you. So as long as Unicorns of Love pay attention to the side lanes and push them out before they make any plays, SK Gaming shouldn't have an opening to get in that base here and go for the back door. Who Bardex. needs boot late game? We need a 100% crit rate instead on our Caitlyn. Double Phantom Dancer. Who loves pink? Bardex. There is so much pressure on him. Kikis gets caught by a little bit of poke here. Let's make it 90%. Box. But it's going to be close we'll, to 100 round it up. We'll game. round it up. We'll round it up. All right, I'll, I'll give you that one. GA again, still available from Power of Evil. I would have loved to have seen a... Uh, Banner of Command from Hillislang help control those side lanes because SK have had much better side lane management. That was a locket uh, uh, activation from Hillislang. Maybe expecting more. Teleport coming in from Visit Chachi as Kickers is getting close to Mega Nar. Chachi's coming in with home guards, looking for a target. Does not get one, and that's teleport down. That is so important when you have an exposed nexus. But look at the side lanes here. Nothing for SK to take into the base. Unicorns want to fight for this dragon here and say, SK Gaming, if you want it, you're going to come five on five. Going for Sven. Oh, he's dropped so low. Wild Ghost keeps him up. Freddy's trying to get in the back line. Vardax is there. The Shockwave wave. gets onto Fox. But now Fox throws down the death mark. He's the first one to fall. They're going to get Freddy next. I think they've done it. Unicorns of love are turning up to Enraten. They've got forgiven. That's they're it. Raised. do exist. They are going to Madrid to face Fnatic. And they did everything. Shockwave to steal a Baron. Kept defending against SK Gaming. Got the last 5-on-5 five five team fight. In their rookie split, Unicorns of Love unseat SK Gaming. They win the 50-minute fight. And they go on to face Fnatic.
there, there, there's, you know what? I believe in magic. I believe in mythical creatures, power of evil with the miracle Baron Steel, unicorns of love with exquisite late game play. And they deserve that win, Fisher. They did in the very end here. And we saw somewhat the same in the early game. Sven still had a massive impact. Unicorns fell behind, and it looked like this was going to be another SK Gaming game. Destroy faces on SK. It appears banning Lee Sin was the right thing to do. Sven Skeren's backpack. <laughs> Sven Skeren's backpack was a blind one. It did not include the Queen of the Zersai. And what a game! I, I, I hope North America's happy. I know we've made your semi-final late, but my word, is it worth it? Can we just talk about how, for the Unicorns of Love here, not playing against Lee Sin was obviously a big deal for them. But the main reason for them not just getting steamrolled by SK Gaming in this game, like in Game 4, was that the Unicorns played a lot safer. Yeah. They didn't walk in and take a bad fight in the mid game. They didn't allow Svenskern to jump around and Lee Sin kick them back and kill them left and right. Or on a Rek'Sai, despite him having the same kind of pressure in the early game, Unicorns were a lot safer. They lane swapped as well, so they didn't have a 2v2 lane going on. That obviously always shuts down the jungle just a little bit because there's only suddenly one lane he can gank. That was a mid lane in this situation. That was very, very important for them. They were still behind. And had it been a normal game, Sven would have smited that Baron, picked yeah. it up by SK, yeah. and it could have been a whole different story. But that didn't happen. They managed to stay fairly even in gold. They went one for one, one for two in these team fights where SK didn't take towers but went to fight. And that really was the big deal because it just gave them more and more chances to get to late game. They got to a late game, they did it. Unicorns of Love are your finalists joining Fnatic and we're gonna send it to Pyrotechnics on stage, standing by with the team that bounced back. Thank you very much, Quick Shot. I am standing on stage with two of the victorious Unicorns of Love, Power of Evil and Vardex. First of all, congratulations guys on making the finals in your inaugural split. What does this mean to you guys as a team coming out of Challenger now, making it to this final destination in Madrid? Well, it's an insane feeling because as everyone knows, we're just rookies. Everyone of us doesn't have that much LCS experience. And now coming into the LCS, um, making it to the playoffs, and now reaching the finals is like, like, what can you like, achieve more? I agree. Maybe winning them, but yeah. we'll have to see that one next week. And Bardex, I want to talk to you a little bit too, because you guys, you definitely had a very back and forth series. Were you worried after game four was taken by SK and it, it just seemed like for a moment you were a different team? I think for us, we felt like super confident, even after like both losses. We felt like if we didn't make the mistakes we made, we felt like really confident in game. And we were like confident in the picks we had and the champion select and everything. So we felt like we just need to think about what went wrong and how to fix those mistakes and trying to win the game from there. Well, it certainly showed in your final game power you had, among several incredible plays, a Baron steal with your shockwave on Orianna. That was one of the most incredible plays I've seen. Like, what was going through your mind once you made that? Well, so before I stole it, I was, we were like about to fight the Baron, and I kind of knew that we can't fight it. They're like just too strong, they're too far ahead. So I was just focusing while my team is like kind of disturbing them um, with fighting. I'm trying to steal the Baron, and afterwards we got two, three turrets, and we, I, I just called that we got this game, and we should just play as good as we can, and we're going to win this. Well, and when it, you guys did, so with that, you now book your ticket to Madrid to be in the final match. You'll be facing off against Fnatic. You guys had a 2-0 record over them during the regular season. Do you think with the playstyle you have now, which I think no team can really pin down, are you confident that you can beat Fnatic in this final match of the spring split? We've always had like really close matches against Fnatic, like looking at the last one with Nexus at like 100, uh, 100 HP like twice. But we actually won twice out of two times, so we're actually really confident, at least I am, and I'm looking forward to playing them in a best of five series. Well, all right, to that one. I mean, look out, Fnatic. The Unicorns are coming for you guys. With that one, gentlemen, thank you so much. Congratulations again on your victory, and we'll see you both in Madrid. And with that, we're going to go ahead and send it back to the analyst desk to wrap up this last semifinal. Take it away, Shocks and crew. 
Thank you very much, Pyra. Uh, I can't believe they are that calm in the interview after what just happened. Absolutely mind-boggling. Um, break it down for us, dentist. The Narpic, was that the secret ingredient here? What, what happened? No, the secret <laughs> ingredient was that they just didn't fight in the mid-game. They had a clear late-game orientated um, composition. The Caitlyn scales better than the Corky. The Oriana scales incredible into the late-game. They just had to be patient in the mid-game and not fight too much. They did it. They stalled out the game. They went to the deciding team fights when it got important. And then that clutch Oriana Baron steal. <sighs> Come on, man. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Well, you know what? If you have anything to say, all I'm going to say is I love the fact they adapt to the early pressure coming from Svensk and was he needed Lisa in Rek'Sai. It would have been a massive, massive amount of pressure from him alone. He couldn't make the same plays, and that was obviously a big deal in this game here. But just the fact that Unicorns adapt to it. Because in Game 2 and Game 4, the reason they lost was because they took these early fights and they didn't do it in the last game, as you said, Dentist. All right, Trevor, your opinion on the series in general? Unicorns are trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Unicorns versus Fnatic two weeks ago was ridiculous. Unicorns last week was super exciting against Gambit. I don't know what it is about this team. I mean, maybe it's because they pick silly fights sometimes, but like they just they put on such an exciting show, and I just I'm, I'm at a loss for it. Um yeah. yeah, I'd like to echo what the Fisher said. Maybe throw it through Leviathan. How uh, telling it is for the Unicorns of Love versus you guys. We say, my God, adapting in a best of five in terms of picks and bans. Genius, but adapting in terms of the way you approach a mid-level and a macro level of a game, that is even bigger improvement, or not? Yeah, that's one of the things we're uh, saying about SK. Maybe SK would have to be able to adapt on the fly to Unicorns, but the Unicorns are the ones that are adapting on the fly to SK. Uh, SK was having a lot of success in the, the late early game or the early mid game fights, and uh, the Unicorns love identified, hey, you know, maybe we shouldn't be taking these fights, try to drag the game out to late game. The Caitlyn, who's supposed to be a lane bully uh, for the Corky, fell behind, and so there wasn't that really uh, that factor involved, so uh, they just took the game to late, avoided the mid game skirmish and uh, it, it worked out really well. Yeah, especially when they go into late game, they have a Z, and that Z wants to split push. They tried to do it, they got a Baron in the very late game for it, but the team fighting was obviously weak. Z was all alone in five unicorns with an exhaust on him. That guy is not going to do anything. And then, of course, 90% crit, double fend and of Audex. That guy's a beast. Yeah. He's a monster. It really is. And just very quick note, at about, was it, 15, 16 minutes on the clock, Hillisung had a three-man Tibbers engage. Kikis had a three-man nine to the wall. That was the first sign that this team comp was going to team fight well. It just took another 35 minutes for them <laughs> to get to the point they could. Yeah. Uh, I like that you bring up Hillisung because there was a lot of genius play throughout the entire series. Five games worth of it and a lot of people stepping up. But for us, stepping up like he did in the quarterfinals. And I think because of that, Hillisung is our MVP of this best of five. It was a hard choice because up to game five, you want to say Lee Sin uh, from Svenskar and absolutely carrying it. Yeah. Fox stepping up. But I think you guys can all agree that Hillisong, because you do it two series in a row as well. Fischer. Yeah, it's the, it's the fact that in the, in the lane, Vadax will fall behind in CS nearly every time. And he still stays relevant in the game because of Hillisang. Because Hillisang is setting our player three. I mean, look at the replays we have here. It's just Hillisang hooking in people, serving Vardax, everything, making sure he's fed in the games. And that's so important because they play these late game setups where if your AD carry starts falling behind and takes 50 minutes to get to a point where he's useful, like the Caitlyn in this situation here, most cases you will lose before you get to that point. But now it worked for them. Yeah, Hillisang just proves that you don't have to be a carry to carry games. That guy... It was just amazing. Hitting hooks left and right, hitting bindings left and right. He was just perfectly played. And even when he got the two champions he's most comfortable of taking away from him, he was clutch with the Annie. He stepped up in the playoffs. That's everything you need to do as a player. Perfect play, deserved MEP. Yeah, absolutely agree. And uh, well, in this best of five, we've seen everything great hooks, great Annie stuns, great Lee Sin kicks, great everything. But you guys on Twitter, you called out the clutch moment and you picked something else. Our tweet is from at Willow Ryan95. Uh, at the Svensker, and he actually tweeted, he must be feeling a shock and a wave of regret for missing that Baron. This is your LCS big play of the day. If a good shockwave hits, I think that might be the only way. Freddy, Dragon's Descent into the river. Baron will be secured. No it's way! stolen! It is stolen! Power of Evil has kept Unicorns in the semi-finals! Ow, Trevor, that uh, is quite loud. They are trying to kill you. I can agree. The thing I don't understand is 
how they stole it. Like, Freddie got bullied out of the lane. He was trying to zone everybody. I mean, he had that second smite. If you're going to go for Baron, play smart, play safe, stack well, your burst. It was down to like 170 HP before the shockwave came in. There was so much time for the smite. Despite that play from Svenskir and obviously being a misplay, him in this series here was absolutely insane. Like, that was Agreed. the best Lee Sin I've seen in Europe since Diamond Procs back in Season 2. He was the main carry for them whenever they won. Also deserved the ban in the last game. Yep. His Rex side, it's not like his Rex side were bad or anything. It was just his team simply couldn't close out the game now because Unicorns adapted. You could make an entire highlight reel from game two and game four of just Sven Skerens Lee Sin. And, and yeah. during game four, I actually buzzed production and said, find a tweet for the Lee Sin lantern follow queue that led to double kill. Because I was like, that is just awesome. And it is the reason SK was still alive in the series. But you can only carry so much yeah. weight. Somebody has to help you to get over the final yeah, hurdle. Like how can you predict that that Orianna... What, what do you think? Did he come in? Did he say, I'm going to steal this Baron? Or did he say, I'm going to pull in one person, maybe two, delayed a little bit? Heck yes. That guy is power of evil. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, I like, can agree with that. If you check the replay, like uh, he started the shockwave at like 1100. So I guess he's he's trying to get in that point where the smite comes in and he leaves it with that tiny bit of health. And uh, yeah, no, that shockwave, the timing on that is exactly to steal. I mean, if you can be in that mindset and think that then uh my deserve to be in the final <laughs> you absolutely do and as you mentioned it with the semi-finals on the books we can finally fill in our playoff bracket here for the european playoffs the unicorns of love will advance to the finals where they will face fanatic and sk gaming after that series dropping down to the third place match where they will face h2k tickets are still available for the final and the third and fourth place match to uh, check it out in person and it's also implications for the championship points if we look later in the season. Yeah, and of course, you've got to remember that the winners are playing for at least 70 points, right? They, If they lose the final, they take home 70. They win, they take home 90. The third, fourth place, you're playing for 50 or 30. And Dentist, I've been quoting you all weekend because you have a fantastic, fantastic way of explaining it. If you win the summer split, you get in. If you're the best team all year, you get in. And if you're the best team on the patch, you get in. It's not my idea, thank you. You served that up on a silver It's Riot's idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you we just, go. You just said it so eloquently. Yeah, very good. There's just uh, one week left in the LCS playoffs, and the stage is set for our spring finals in Madrid, Spain, at the Palacio Vista Alegre. The action kicks off with the third place match between H2K and SK Gaming on Saturday, April 18th, while the finals between Fnatic and the Unicorns of Love will get underway on Sunday, the 19th. This matchup in the final, wow. I mean, in terms of aggressivity, I would have said before this best of five, it would be the most explosive, but maybe the Unicorns of Love think, hey, we can play it the other way. Fnatic are going to be making a submission to Riot Games and the Live Balance team. Can you please buff the Nexus? <laughs> the last time these two teams met, the Nexus armor was the deciding factor, and I'm sure Fnatic will have something to say about that. Dentist, your are yeah. final. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, they wanted you, you can't really read that fine. Like, if you look at the games we had yesterday, Fnatic was looking really good in the last two matches. Game four and five was just looking superior as a team in terms of strategy, adaptation, and everything else. This series today, it was wild, it was crazy, but if there's a team that can that can take Fnatic and make them play their game, it's Unicorns. Yeah, like, uh, I don't understand how I'm supposed to predict the final of the <laughs> Unicorn series, because these guys are so crazy. Uh, their picks are awesome, their, their style of play is reckless, and uh, if I had to predict a winner between the uh, Fnatic uh, Unicorns match, it's, I, I want to... It's lean the a, audience. Yeah, the audience, of course. <laughs> it's going to be the most enjoyable oh. series. Two, two <laughs> aggressive teams, and I can't wait. Yeah, the fish show. Well, I mean, looking at the games today from the Unicorns of Love, they showed, as long as they play like in game five, some of it in terms of not fighting early on, they can be okay against Fnatic. The problem is if they make any mistakes in the early to mid game, Fnatic is going to roll right over them like they did against H2K, who is a lot better in that stage of the game than the Unicorns. So I think it's a risky one, but because Unicorns seem to pull off these weird things, the underdog story and everything, we can never say never. Fnatic will be the favorites, though. All right, Fnatic will be the favorites. I just have to mention it on PTL. I said that uh, Unicorns of Love would win, as well would uh, Fnatic. So, Called props it. Props to me. <laughs> anyway. <Called it. laughs> well, anyway, we're very excited to see you two guys in the finals as well. I think we can announce that. Must be exciting. You guys did a great job. You were praising Riot all along, so you get to go to Madrid as well. <laughs> nice. And, of course, if you guys at home, you can't make it to Madrid, we'll be bringing you our final coverage of the game starting on the 18th of April at 5 p.m. Central European time. That is 8 a.m. Pacific. Whew. That is all from us here today here in Berlin. Stay tuned because the North American LCS is about to take over with their last semifinal match between number one Team Solomon and Team Impulse. Uh, people, you know, they're, they're getting there. They're getting there. I think 
we're going to see another five games. I'm just going to call it. It's going to be a perfect uh, semi-final weekend. Before we hand it over, though, to the North American team to get things underway, let's take a look back at today's action. About to kick off this best of five picks and bands. We have no idea what to expect. Looks like he's going to come in for a gank. His body slammed over. That's a flash nice. barrel. Forgiven. It's going to flash away from that dark binding. Continues to get chased down. Less than 100 HP as Hillisang and Kickers will look for that last hit. It's lack of vision comes to hurt SK. They it's rush TP. the dragon down so, so quickly. It is secured by Kickers. He throws in the barrel of the smite and picks up dragon number one. Oh, oh across the wall. He fail flashes. Binding from Chachi. There's like one that, on There's the TP. Here comes Visit Chachi. And Raider throws down the tidal wave, but it's not going to be enough. I mean, I don't give up. I don't think. Rexite, 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 Rexite. Yeah, I'm Rexite. I snap, I snap, I snap. He's dead. Nice, get the I mean, I mean. SK in the background. Hillisang has gone down. Here comes Chachi. He curves the bullet, spins around the corner, and is now tanking up three. Pops the shield to pop Sven Skerritt. Power of Evil hammering away with the artillery from the back line. They're going to trade top laner shortly. The Death Rocket secures the kill. Buster Shot plus Explosive may not be enough, and it's not. Now Power of Evil's flashing away. Somebody get me an oxygen tank. And they've done it. Game one in the best of five goes to the ponies. Yeah, if this game goes to five games, can we order the huh? cheeseburgers? <laughs> okay, thank you for dinner. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Uh, what? Taco? Yeah. Like, can we get taco here? Taco? Uh, good. Uh, Mickey D. And also he has the kill pressure. Oh, the death sentence connects! It's going to land on a flame chompers! Hillisun has done it again! They're coming from the river. That's a dragon's rage to boot them back. The fat man comes in and throws the barrel down. All of a sudden, Fox is popped. The Rome grab themselves. Oh, and no! Death no! Really? It connected! The Super Mega Death Rocket's available with a BF Sword and a pickaxe, nice. and his well. body blocked! Sven Skerin saves for Given's life! Gonna take the safe route though, because he had no outlaws yet. But he steals Sven it! Sven steals Sven Skerin it. gets the second dragon! Death sentence onto Fox, but the Timbers stands up the Unicorns of Love! I go over, I go over. Let's go, get it, get it. Go to Jinx. Push mid, push mid. Jinx, 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 Jinx. Kill her, kill and SK Gaming will pick up a game in the series to even it at one to one. Don't try to change something where we don't really need to change something. You played really well the early game, you played it passively. We just need to be a bit more careful later. Yep. Yeah. That's all. We Five do have the back. confidence boost, guys, but we should get back down to earth and like, start focusing on the game. Power people doesn't have a lot of mana. Shockwave well, though. Shockwave hits two feet. Might have been lying to you, Barrel scream doesn't connect. It's Kickers that gets first blood. Visit Chachi comes in and he takes down Santa. Shockwave onto two tanky members of the team. Sven is the first to fall. Reply with Freddy. Here comes Fox. Bubble onto Power of Evil. Oh, it's going to actually sustain just a little bit through. Oh, oh, rocket. Love it, man. And they look to take the series oh, two to one. one. Not giving up a single kill. <laughs> Oh my god, Pino, I haven't hit one for like 15 bananas. Hillisang's running him down, Summon a heal is up. One more rocket! Fardax has done it! Fardax and Hillisang have 2v2'd and rated and forgiven. Now Fardax will go down to Sven Skerin as he's trying to save the day for SK. Can he land the sonic wave? I'm willing to bet that he can. He's got flash available, he connects, follows in. We do not see the kill going out yet. Ignite is burning, Sven Skerin gets one. Hillisang not heal. able to reply. Power of Evil's got no... Oh, oh that's a flash oh. hook! Forgiven gets caught, he's played backwards. We do see the command protect. It is going to be Shockwave on Chachi alone. Rubble, there's a lot of support Lantern's here. Coming. This is three versus three. Lantern comes out. Sven follows through. Six, zero, two. Sven Skerritt is unstoppable. Now the rest of Unicorns are in full retreat. That's a flash stun from Erated. And SK are running amok. Two members caught up by the Shockwave. The Fox is now out of mana, but it doesn't matter because Power of Evil is down. This has gone so wrong for Unicorns of Love. And to Fischio, we are going to game five. Now Freddy still has the option to drag his descent in. The Shockwave does get two in the back. Line as Mr. Chachi re engages. Sven Skerin and Erated are forced away, but it's Kick is the first victim. Now, Power of Evil is being focused down by the Dragon Lady. Fardex way out of position. He's not going to be able to get too many auto attacks down, but Fox jumps into range. It's an auto attack from Vardex. Kick is looking for the fight, and Freddy is chasing down. That's a big gnaw. It manages to stun Forgiven on the back line. Freddy and Fox are on the front line. It's hit aside. Flash stuns. Here comes Chachi. He's caught Forgiven. Vardex is unable to get He's auto down. attacks. They've got them. Sven Skerin's down. For Forgiven is down! The race and hold, no there's the not, heal. summon a heal! The root, the auto attack! Forgiven's down once again! 
come five on five. Going for Sven. Oh, he's dropped so low. Wild Ghost keeps him up. Freddy's trying to get in the back line. In their rookie split, unicorns of love. Unseat.